Welcome to the Hot Button Sports Show. It's your boy. I'm your host, Isaac Lane. And today I got a very special guest. I got family, the one, the only, All-American Joshua Youngblood. Welcome to the Hot Button, man. Sir, thank you for having me. What's good, huh? You already know. You already know, man. Long time coming. Um, the season is about to kick off. And, uh, man, I got a lot of questions for you. I just I, Let me go ahead and be the first to say, just in case you don't know, um, at whatever point in history you're watching this video, this is my nephew, Joshua Youngblood. And I want him to just introduce himself, let us know where you're from, all that good stuff, and where you're at right now. Yes, sir. So my name is Joshua Youngblood. I'm um, kick return specialist. I play receiver um, from Tampa, Florida. Went to Berkeley Prep. I spent a year and a half at Kansas State, transferred, so now I'm at Rutgers University, entering my redshirt sophomore season. So that's where I'm at right now. Okay, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. Now, you played high school football, but not at the position you're currently at now. What position mm -hmm. did you play in high school? Played quarterback in high school, so I was behind center taking snaps. Played quarterback in high school, and you're playing wide receiver now. Take us through that transition. Was it a difficult transition? I mean, how do you go from throwing the ball your, almost the entirety of your high school football career to now you're catching the ball? Yeah, it's definitely um, a big adjustment for me, honestly. Um, just learning the ins and outs of a receiver, how to break, when to break, what releases to use. That was the biggest thing for me, just getting more knowledgeable um, and basically getting a, a bigger bag. I needed, I needed more tools. You know, so that's what I've been working on, trying to mix up my routes and my releases, um, how to break different type of what type of ways, ways to, like, be deceptive to a DB. That's the biggest transition because routes are routes, but you got to be able to perform at a high level in college. You can't just run the same route like in high school. Mm -hmm. Who's been instrumental in helping you make that transition? I will say uh, Redell Anthony, he played at Florida. I actually just got done with a workout with him. Mm -hmm. um, and he he works on slowing down the game for me. So we do drills at like 75% speed. We don't ever go full speed, but we work the details. And he's real, uh, particularly when it comes to what he wants and how we can just get better, perfect our craft. Yeah, so, you know, working with somebody who's done it at such a high level, like Redell Anthony, like, has he prepped you for the game speed between, you know, although, you know, you, you've you played, but, I mean, how difficult is it, not just to make the switch from the position, but explain to any high school recruits who may be watching how fast the game is from high school to college? It's extremely fast. Um, in high school, you can just run past everybody if you're mm -hmm. fast, but... When you get, once you get to college, it's not just the DBs that are fast. The linebackers are running four fours, four fives. The D linemen are running four fives, four sixes now. So everybody's taking a good angle and everybody's running hard. So you got to be able to really get out, you know, in order to be fast in college. Right, right, right. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. So um, you make the transition from high school to college and you play for Kansas State. You've had the opportunity to play in two major conferences. What the, you, you will soon be able to play in two major conferences, the Big Ten and the Big 12. Um, what if, if we had to do a versus battle between Big Ten, Big 12? I know you haven't officially played in one yet. Who's got the upper hand, Big Ten or Big 12, man? Where you where you where you at on that? I say I have to say the Big Ten 110 percent. Um in my eyes, I think the Big Ten is like the mecca of college football. You got Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State, Whew. Iowa, Northwestern. You know, it goes on and on and on. And all those guys, they have a lot of dudes on the team that can really play football. This is a bigger conference, too. They have more teams in it. So I would have to say the Big Ten. Um, the players are bigger, faster um, in the Big Ten. So, no, I'm ready for it, though. I think football is football, so – I'll be able to perform at a high level there, too. That's good. That's good. That's good. So um, you're playing D1 ball, D1 football. Um, I believe that, you know, 
you go as far as kind of, you know, your circle that's around you. Um, you got any friends, man, any family members that's also on the same level as you, man, playing D1 football or playing college football, man, that you keep in uh, contact with? I stay in contact with my cousin, Zach Carter. Um, he plays mm -hmm. at Florida. And it's just inspirational to see uh, his journey because at first he wasn't really playing too much. Then he really stepped on the scene two years ago, had a good season last year, and I think he's going to have a, a monster season this year and have a chance to play in the league. So just talking to him, communicating with him on how he goes about stuff, just so I can better myself and try to get to the same path he's going. That's good, man. That's good, man. That's what's up. Um, so – you, and not just you, but almost every college football player had to navigate the pandemic year. Uh, for some people, they were able to turn a negative into a positive. Um, others, the pandemic year turned out to be, you know, um, the straw that broke the camel's back for their for the future of their, you know, football careers. For others, it was kind of like a do-over year because um, you was able to retain that one year of eligibility. Um you were active during the pandemic year. A lot of things happened. Um, a lot of things were on the transition and on the move. So as you reflect on that pandemic year, and we're still navigating through it, but, you know, the, the worst of it is behind us. How did and how has the pandemic affected your football career? Uh, yeah, so the pandemic affected my career in a great way. Um, I entered the portal during the pandemic, you know, and everybody was into the transfer portal. So a lot of schools would hit me up, but, you know, it's a numbers game. We got that many people in the portal. And um, I think I'm now, like with the pandemic, I was able to to go to a school that I really fit at. You know, I really believe that Rutgers is a great fit for me. Like if I could do it over again, um, you know, I probably would have really considered them out of high school. Um, but I'm just glad I'm there now. I think God does things for a reason. So I'm at Rutgers for a reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Purpose behind everything, right? So that, that kind of just leads into the next question of, you know, why Rutgers? I know there was some pre-existing relationships, um, but, you know, what what really was the driving force behind that decision? Basically the coaching staff, um, mm. you know, Coach Yano coached me in high school. My receivers coach, Coach Wood, he was um, a receiver for the Bucks, Taekwon Underwood. So he's done it at that level. He played at Rutgers. He's a Rutgers legend. So I think that's really hard to pass by, you know, when you have two, your head, your position coach and your head coach, you know them on a personal level. So I, I thought, you know, let me go here. I talked to my family, talked to you guys, and you guys were 100% behind it. So it just made me more comfortable in my decision. Yeah, yeah, awesome, man. Awesome, man. Great decision, great decision, man. Um, So you – come with the accolades um, that, you know, uh, some people may know, some people may not know, uh, special teams, player of the year, uh, Big Ten, um, All-American, uh, Returnman. Uh, so, I mean, can you take us, because I can only imagine, I never in my life caught a, caught a return, ever. I was, the, I was the big guy blocking up front. Can you take us, because you did it at a High level. Can you take a three, right? You return three. Yes, sir. Three. One, you get lucky, right? One, one, just good blocking, you get lucky. You know, two, okay, just had it, you just had it, just had a great game. Somebody ain't drinking no creatine, you know. Mm -hmm. This one, you you return three against top-notch competition. That's when you enter into the specialist conversation. So can you take us? In the in, in in your mind as you are returning kicks, take us into the mind of a kickoff return. So the first things first, I always say a prayer before every kickoff return. Um, you know, I just say God protect me before before I catch it. And then once I see it in the air, it's like a feeling you get every every kick return that I call it my sword. It's like a surreal feeling, like you almost don't remember it, but. I'll just take you through the Texas one. So the Texas one, you see the ball in the air. And when the ball's in the air, you can't hear nothing. Like, I don't hear anything. I don't hear nothing. Catch the ball, start running. I follow my blockers. You know, they opened up a hole for me. And once you see that hole, you got to hit it. So I catch it, and I can hear the fans a little bit. 
But once I hit that hole and start running, I just hear wind, wind in my helmet. And um, I got in the end zone and, the, you know, tech, we played at Texas, so it was dead silent. Like, I could hear my teammates yelling my name. It was crazy. You know, they were just hyped 10, 15 seconds ago, 100 people, 100,000 people, and now they're silent. So wow. it's definitely a special moment. Like, I just get goosebumps talking about it. But in the moment, I and mean, it feels crazy just be able to score a touchdown for your team. And then on top of that, like, in one of the most electrifying ways, you know, through special teams. Yeah, yeah, w without without a doubt. So I I believe you tell me if you if if you if you agree with this statement. I believe that a kickoff return, even over punt return, even over a punt return, I believe that a kickoff return for a touchdown is the most difficult play to pull off in football. Yeah, I, I believe so. It got to be well executed because if one guy, it's it's eleven guys out there. If one guy misses the block, he can kill the whole return. Everybody has to be on yeah. their job. Yeah, it, it can blow it. It can blow everything up. And then you have 270 pound foot grown men coming downhill, coming to take your head off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you've got to be able to maneuver it to get decent field position at the 2025, let alone go all the way for a touchdown. And uh, man, you do it at a really high level. You do it at a high level. Um, so a lot of things is, has, has changed and is changing in college football. Um, you know, endorsement deals, uh, college football players getting paid. If As you reflect on your own recruiting trail and you have a high school recruit right now who is, you know, got all this extra stuff as far as, you know, pressure about where he's going to go to college, what would be that one piece of advice you would give that high school recruit? I would say you have to go where you're wanted and you have to go where you're going to play. Um, both of the schools at Kansas State, you know, they told me beforehand, before I went, they were like, you might have an opportunity to play. You got to learn the playbook. So you got to come in and just work. Um, so they they already made that established. You know, a lot of my homeboys that I talked to, some of the schools that they went to, they never talked about early playing time. You know, they just wanted them to be there. So you have to really talk to, your, talk to the coaches that are recruiting you and see if they have a plan for you. Because if they have a plan for you, as soon as you come in, that means you're going to play. And I feel like the earlier you get on the field, that's just the quicker you can get in the national spotlight. Um, so that that's what I would say. Just make sure that the coaches have a plan for you, because if not, then you're just going to be another guy on the team. Let's get advice. Let's get advice. Go where you're valued, right? Exactly. Not where you're just going to be another number. I think that's great advice. I think that's good advice. Um, speaking of advice, what's the biggest piece of advice you think uh, you've received throughout this, this football journey so far? Just keep your head down and work. Um, that's something that I, I'm still working on today. You know, sometimes you can let outside things get to you, um, but you got to be able to lock in every single day and go to work. You know, regardless of the circumstances, regardless how you're feeling, you got to find a way to, to man up and, you know, do all your reps. Don't don't cheat your reps because um, it's all going to pay off in the end. So that's the biggest advice I got. Just keep your head down and work. When you look up, you'll be at the finish line. Uh, one word I take from that is consistency. Mm -hmm. right. Being consistent and even in the little things, right? Yeah, exactly. So one thing that I do, I like to wake up a lot and catch jugs. I wake up every morning and do something. Sometimes I'll, I wake up every morning at 450. Mm -hmm. um, some days I'll go to the facility, catch jugs. Other days I'll get a band workout in at home, push-ups. But I'm up at 450 every single day doing something just to help me and better myself and better my craft. That's it, man. Consistency <coughs> and dedication, man. Um, so yes, being being an athlete, being a college athlete, and a high school football athlete, but specifically a college athlete, um, there's a word connected to it that we oftentimes leave off. And I think you can talk about it because you're, you're living proof that, you know, it's it's a two it's a two it's a two word term. It's not just athlete when you're in college. You're a student athlete, and uh, man, I believe that you have been living up to that title. Uh, man, can can you just talk to us about that whole journey? Because it's not easy having the schedule that college athletes have in order to be an athlete. 
and to make the starting spot and to actually, you know, play well. And then at the same time, not just stay eligible, but trying to, you know, finish a degree, learn something so you can have something in your bag when you leave college. Talk, talk about being a student athlete. Yes, sir. Uh, being a student athlete is really crazy because there's a lot of things from high school that you had to do in college that you've never done before, like mm-hmm. study hall, tutoring. So there's a lot of opportunities for you to just go in there, sit down and, and not take your work seriously. But one thing that I learned that helps me a lot in school is if I actually try to learn the material um, as like a concept, like sometimes people get caught up in just trying to turn in assignments. But once I actually started to fix, I'm in HR management. Once I actually figured out, okay, why is this manager doing this? Then it just made the class easier. And like right now, I take my academics very seriously. Like right now, I have a 3.5 cumulative GPA in college. Wow. Last term, I had a 3.4. Um, so, you Hold know, on, I repeat take- what your cumulative GPA is again one more time. It's a 3.5. Wow. Yes, sir. Wow. That's that, This is somebody who's working for it, man. You got to work for it. Exactly. You got to work for it. You got to work for it. And you already know it pays off. Man, that's good, man. That's great, man. It was leading to this, this this question, man, um, and then we're going to shift gears a little bit. But what's your biggest motivation? What motivates you to be that student athlete? Um, definitely my family, I would have to say, because um, ever since really middle school, fifth, sixth grade, um, it's, it's been my uncle, my mom, my sister, my uncles, my grandma, my aunties. They've always been everything, you know, every sporting event. You know, you know, you guys used to take me out, train me when I was in sixth grade. So I'm just grateful for them. And I feel like what I'm doing now is just repaying the favor. You know, hopefully one day this game of football can um, help me change their lives, too. I want to be I want to be I want to buy them nice things. You know, I want to I want to be wealthy and have it to where nobody has to worry about anything anymore. So that's my goal. I need to take care of my family, make sure they're good. And if they're good, then I'm good. Man, that's what's up, man. That's that's what I call the though that's the immaterial goal, right? Mm-hmm. So that's 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 that motivation that doesn't necessarily, you know, fade away. And you know, I think everybody in your family is just proud of the man that you are becoming. And so, you know, that's that's paying you forward, that's paying it forward enough. Um, so I want to switch gears because not only are you a football player, you're a football fan, and you are a mm-hmm. sports fan. So I want to ask you a question. Um who is your favorite NFL football team? The Bucks, Tampa Bay Bucks. <laughs> no, no, it's Tampa right Bay Buccaneers, baby. Right. You already know, man. You already know, man. Check, man. I, we won the championship in Tampa, and you know I got to play on my birthday, February seventh, baby. Uh, we got we we doubled up, man. Got that second chip, man. What do you think the Bucks are gonna do this year, man? The whole squad coming back. What's what, what? What do you think? I think we'll go thirteen and three. I said we we'll go thirteen and three. Um, okay. Um, well, you know we got an extra game. Oh yeah. Thir- uh, fourteen and three. Thirteen and four. 13 and four. four. Okay. Probably drop, probably drop one to the Saints. You know. Okay. I would hate that. But okay. Yeah, I would hate that too. But regular season, you know, we ain't too worried about them. As long as we get in. Exactly. As long as we get in, then we good. We got Tom Brady. Yeah. But I think they'll be good. They bring it back. With the whole 22 out of 22, right? Yep, all of them. So, I mean, I think if those guys just keep their drive and motivation, which I think they will, we should be in good shape. And O.J. Howard is back. See, people oh, yeah. people saw our offense clicking without arguably one of the most talented tight ends that we've seen come out the draft. What's that guy? Kyle Pitts? He was Kyle Pitts before Kyle Pitts. Exactly. And he's going to be – and him and Brady were clicking before he got hurt. And you mesh him in with a B, Chris Godwin, Mike. I mean, I mean, we got the best – we got the best receivers and offensive weapons in the world. Exactly. Yeah, facts. It was. Hands down. So, we got, we got a dope receiving core, as you know. Mm-hmm. You play the position wide receiver. Give me, I was going to stress you. I was going to stress you and say, give me your top five. But I said, no, nah, I ain't going to stress you. I said, give me your top 
three. Although it might be a little bit more stressful to do three, you know, three or five, whichever one you're more comfortable with. Give us your top wide receivers in the NFL today. All right. I'm going to give you four because, like, one Let's of them was out of the came back in. So, one, I got Diggs. I got Diggs at one. Ooh, Stephon. Stephon Diggs at one. I got Mike Evans at two. Woo! Oh, show up. They always leave him out. He's the only receiver to have a thousand yards through every season besides Jerry Rice. That's greatness. He got to be two. Three, I'm going to go with Tyreek Hill just because he's a freak mm. so fast. Unstoppable. Probably one of the most unstoppable players in the NFL. And then four, I'm going to say Antonio Brown because, like, he's still okay. a great receiver. You feel me? Okay. He still got records. He was just out for a little bit, but. Right. I'm with it. I'm with it. I'm with it. Okay. I got it. I got it. All right. So y'all got it. Hot button exclusive. Joshua Youngblood's top four wide receivers in the NFL. Um, so I want to end with this. I want to end with this scenario. So it's the Super Bowl. You're down by five. You're at your own 20-yard line. 60 seconds on the clock, no timeouts. you got to get it in the end zone. Listen closely. Here's what I need. I need your quarterback. This is from, for, from throughout the entire history of the NFL. I need your quarterback, two wide receivers, and a running back. All right. Let's see. Quarterback, I'm going to go with Tom Brady. He's the greatest all time. Wide receivers, I'm going to go with Randy Moss. Woo! And, oof. I'm going to go with Randy Moss and Terrell Owens. Had him outside. Woo! Running back, I need to catch a running back. So, go with Ward Dunn. Have him back there. Oh! Oh, you done messed it up. He done messed it up. He done messed it up. I wasn't even thinking about Ward. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, we'll have Ward back there. Tell me. Yes, I can see it. I love it. I love it. You need a tight end or no? Yes, give me a tight end. Yes. I'm going to pick a newer tight end. Hmm, let's see. I'll probably go with. He's not, he not too new. He, he retired. I'm going to go with Tony Gonzalez. Tony Gonzalez. That's money. That's money right there. T.O., Randy Moss, Tom Brady, Ward Dunn, Tony and, and, and Tony Gonzalez. That's touchdown. Yeah, that's touchdown. That's a, what's going on? 45 seconds. Facts. Might Man. take it off again. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Man, I appreciate you joining the Hot Button, nephew. Yes, sir. Appreciate man, you thanks for Yes, sir, man. Thanks for joining us. Um, Listen, if you got value from this video, do me a favor. Like this video. Click that subscribe button so you can get notified the next time the hot button drops a video and I'll holler at you. Yes, sir.